Let's do it. We got one of our favorite guests who, it's funny, Mark Roberge. Hey. I feel like you have not been on as often as our friendship would dictate, you know? <laughs> yes. Like, it feels like you've been on a bunch, but you're saying this is the first time you've been here in the yeah. studio and in this office. And maybe it's because we just talk outside of uh, the podcast, so yeah. it feels that way. But it's, I'm like, wow, well, recurring guests, well, not yeah, I mean, we've been here, and you're for in New York. Like we, we should have got to come on more, man. <laughs> I know, and and Nate is always awesome. He's always like, dude, you got to come in, come to HQ, come to HQ, and it, and and it just like was it's wasn't working out. So we've been planning this for weeks, and today worked out great. So thanks for having me. I should be here an awful lot more. Well, it's it's hard when you we were just talking about. You know, you got to be a rock star, and now you got to be a teacher on top of being a dad, yeah, and like half a scientist and a doctor. <laughs> And I tried to be a golfer for a minute. Did I, you? I, I was like, I saw everyone playing golf. I'm like, I'm gonna fucking go play a bunch of golf. And then I would go play golf with all these athletes and shit. And I'm like, I fucking suck at golf. <laughs> had you had you never played at all? I played when I was young. I worked in golf. I cleaned. I was at a country club cleaning people's carts and clubs. I was in back of the house, mm -hmm. you know, cleaning shit. And I was playing. I was I was a good golfer. And then I think my 20s, I just did not play. We just were on the road. Yeah, and now I'm busy. trying to get it back. And uh, I went out there. It's, it's, it's awful. It's ugly as hell. But uh, but I'm getting it back. I'm getting there. I Are you still working season. on it? I'm still working on so, it. So you're one of the few who kept their quarantine hobby. Like yes. I went through four or five of them. They all lasted six <laughs> hours, maybe. Well, yeah. uh, I tried to learn Spanish. Tried to learn the ukulele. Uh, yeah. And by Each try, of those things lasted I mean, six minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six hours is a stretch. They were both very momentary things. And I actually don't know what the else. The ukulele and the Spanish, he got a ukulele and a book. His, uh, the way he was going to learn Spanish was that he bought a book in Spanish and the same book in English and then was just going to like yeah, compare. When things really popped off, I had a scare in the very beginning because I was sick. He was waiting you for my test. Sick. Yeah, he was waiting for my test before he went home. I ended up getting the negative test. He knows the coast is clear. Has his bags packed, walks out the door. As he's walking out, he looks back and sees the ukulele and the Spanish book. And he just lets the door close. He just kept <laughs> like, on going. There was like, a could have. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to forget those. Yes, I am. What a shame. Oh, you yeah. let the door close on a chapter of your life. Right yeah. there, right? And you, it's like you knew it happened. That, that when you were sick, I followed that man. And that was like, a, that was the time. Yeah. You know, and everyone was watching. I was almost too sick, to be honest. I was like, I feel yeah. so shitty that. Well, it was also at the point where the you know the symptoms were ever changing. So yeah. I was like, all right, I have a dry, I have a wet cough, not a dry cough. And then a week later, they're like, oh, you can have a wet cough too. I don't fucking know. But yeah, that was touch and go for a moment. There, well, you were the one I saw take the test for the first time. Yeah, right, it was crazy. And but I even that, fine. I feel like they did. You know, mine kind of went up as opposed to in, and I was like, fuck. Of course, <laughs> I'm the guy who gets it wrong. Yeah, 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 I remember him being like, it literally hit me in the brain, and like the and test we the take test. now. Like it goes like this. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's the outer rim, it's which I'm like very you can't outer possibly rim. <laughs> be getting some, you know, the yeah. information you need from this. No. So I got tested as well, and then recently I think I did like some sort of saliva, quick, quick, quick test, like ten minute, yeah, fifteen minutes. Oh, I tell you right away. Yeah, like, those are the ones no that always come back accurate. positive. Right? No way, this could right. be accurate. So so many false positive, false positive, positive negatives, down. whatever. But the negatives are always accurate. But sometimes you get false, false positives. Positive. So that's a good place to be in, I feel like. Yeah, you never want to get the other one. Right, that would right. be tough. Like, oh, we were wrong. You do have it. Uh, but yeah, now, you know, you got a bunch of kids. They're not in school. And I say this all the time. I, I half make fun of teachers, half like praise them. But I feel like if you're a nanny, a caretaker, child care, whatever, you deserve to make a billion dollars a year. Dude, we had this talk this morning. This is like, you know, the PTA meeting. You're watching this thing. The folks complaining <sighs> at a public school. Yeah principal or teacher about like what's expected all these things you're thinking to yourself like god damn these people are not getting paid enough to do no. your bullshit. <laughs> bullshit man you should be anyone who's teaching even especially a principal man they deserve way more than they're getting and zero fucking complaints yeah. like none it's the same thing we were saying the other day with like like with soldiers and cops how we don't have that Duty to service. Yeah, that call to I service. would never, never enlist. I would never, never sign had up. that yeah. feeling. Same thing with like like you have to have the same thing to be an educator. Totally because crazy, man. No and, one does and, it for the I money. Mean, I, I struggle with putting up with my kids' bullshit, and I have undying, unconditional love yeah. for them. If I had like a class of like thirty kids, and I'm like, oh, there goes like that spoiled brat. There goes that kid. His parents are an asshole. This kid's annoying. I would. I mean, I, I, I don't know how they fucking do I'll it. Go, I went to college to be a teacher. So <laughs> really? I went in hard. I was like English lit. 
studied, studied, studied. Uh, I'm going I'm to be a teacher one day. And then I'm going to oh. fucking move to a college campus and I'm going to live near the campus and I'm going to like throw the ball around all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be the cool professor. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be like, hey, bros, you know, like, <laughs> did you read that? Salinger. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> yeah, so when did when did that dream Dog. go? Never mind. I'm gonna go become April an international rock star. Fourteenth yeah. of this year when I was at my house and I'm screaming at my little kids who are looking at me like, who is this animal monster? <laughs> <laughs> I realize I have no business Dude, anywhere near a classroom. It's like, very funny. Yeah. You found out early enough. I had a friend who went all the way through their masters and that she got her masters in teaching and then before Thanksgiving of her first year of teaching, she said, I'm done. This, she is, my, this is my one year. Wow. No, she, she finished a year, but that was her one wow. year. Wow. What, what age? What? what age uh, kids? Uh, fifth grade, I believe. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough I mean, one. At least you found out early. Go, going through masters in discovery. It's a lot of money I, and a lot of time down the drain. Knew, I just knew this was not for me. But in my head, it's like I saw like Dead Poet Society. Yeah, like, right. We're right. going to stand on cool. tables and shit. Right. And, you know, and it's yes. going to be like, it's never going to be like no, that. Dangerous minds, still, man. I'm going to yeah. like, you know, change these. I'm going to be in a gang with these kids. <laughs> now. I, it, it is funny watching the amount of people who are like, I can't take care of my kids every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's why if you're a stay at home parent or like I said, a nanny or whatever, you know, I, most parents have them like, you know, you get home from work, you see them in the evening, you put them to bed, and then on the weekends you have them. Yeah. To do that around the clock during the weekdays is like, oh, I fucking hate these kids. <laughs> I, I this thought, is awful. Yeah. I thought life was like how my, like 1957 or like how my dad's life was. My dad came home a highball. Uh -huh. Hey, how you doing? Hey, good. You know, and then that, that was, was cool. it. So, yeah. <laughs> was We're not going to talk like, about our fucking feelings. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. And the next morning, he's like, see you later, fuck face. You know, and I'm like, all right. I thought that's what it was going to be. But now it's totally different. If you were that type of parent where you're like, work, home, work, home, apparently that's not even allowed anymore. Right. Yeah. You got to be very involved. Which, I mean, we yeah. probably should be. Of course. But it just, it just got to a point where that's just not how it really worked. So it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is a lot different than... You know what I thought it was going to be. There's got to be a happy medium in yeah. there where sometimes you just got to say, you know what, we're just not going to talk for the next hour. The work life balance for me, and I guess this is interesting for you as a, as a musician. Like the the hardest struggle in my life, like literally, was trying to balance home, meaning the kids and and marriage and work. Where it was like, at home, everyone thinks I work too much. And at work, everyone thinks that I'm like slacking because I'm at home. I didn't want to travel. I didn't want to do certain things. And I'm like, well, I'm losing on all fronts. Nobody yeah. thinks I'm doing a good job. Like, fuck, you know? Yeah, this is the this is the fucking when you're in the bathroom and you're like, nobody fucking cares. <laughs> yes. yeah. I fucking swept the kitchen four times today. Not one person said thank you. Yes, you know? yes. Like, yes. Eat shit, right. pal. It's I do crazy. see a hairspray over here, which makes me so fucking happy. <laughs> yeah, man. Just to see that y'all are in the, you know, in the game care of it. too. You know? we, make it, we make it look good. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's quality. Uh, but yeah, that, that, uh, that balance. So, I mean, for you, like, when you would go out on the road, you know, I guess, I guess when, when you're in your p profession, it's just kind of understood that things are going to be a little bit different too, right? Well, you know, like they were, just there know, is that, like, yeah. yeah, there is that understanding, but I, I'll tell you what, the first time I, we were on tour with uh, Dave Matthews band, we were at the gorge three days and I saw that they had a bus and like a 18 wheeler and like a whole setup just for the kids. So I was like, Oh, oh. shit. Like you can do that. Yeah. And then you start building your world a little bit differently. Because at, at first cool. you think, you're mm. A, you're supposed to do party animal stuff. Mm. You're supposed to do that. And so you do it for years. And you literally almost die like once a week. And you're like, <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm not kidding. And that's how you act. Mm. And then you, these doors start to open where you realize like, oh, no, no, no. I can shape do it I how I want to shape what I want to do. Yeah. So family became super important to us when we realized that we can be a rock and roll family. That's very cool. And that's how we look at it. Like, my yeah. wife is, like, down. Like, the coolest girl in the world. So I was like, oh, we can definitely pull this off. Mm, yeah. So we just always talked about it. It's so it, key, right? To have, so like, key. to have a... I think in anything in life, having, like, a partner who's down. But anything that's, like, entertainment-based, where you're either on the road, you're traveling, there's a lot of attention, negative and positive. There's groupies. There's haters. Da, 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 da. You have to be a down-ass chick down. or guy, like, whatever. Dude, just to be cool with it. And, and... Because is a trust factor, right? Mm -hmm, so once yeah. you got that, it's all good. And she would just be 
full of advice and we would follow that advice in so many ways and it led to more fun times. So I thought, okay, we can we can do the rock and was roll. Was she the thing. only one? Like had No, you... they all are. So... No, 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 but I mean like for you, had you dated or been with anybody who wasn't down during your no. career? She was always the No, one, right? like yeah. I just lucked out cuz we got together. She saw all my shit, right? So I, we got together when we were just taking off in college. So I'm like, "Yeah, hey, we're going on tour with Kid Rock for However many days that was, and if you've ever seen a Kid go. Rock show, it was wild. Hey, hey, college girlfriend, I'm, I'm 21, and I'm going to go on tour with Kid Rock. And that was our first when I get tour. Back. Yeah. So we step out on the Shit. thing, and his staging had strippers on it. I mean, that was what he showed people. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even in. That Shit. wasn't even in. Yeah. So I'm just saying, we were always, we always lucked out in that, and everyone involved with our world. So we, we, we saw other folks doing it right, and we said, okay, we, we can do this right. So that something we we took even to now, like when when we're home and I'm at the studio and I'm home a lot and we're not really touring for a year, mm. that whole vibe still exists. Where it's like, hey, you should go to the studio and work on some stuff. You should go do, you know, right? And, right. So that's what and you, you go and you like. I, I it always like fascinates me like how artists where when we have writers in here or comedian comedians even like who like when they write. So you're like, I'm going to the studio. I'm going to work. It's not just when inspiration strikes. It's like I'm gonna go sit there, and grind it and out, make sure of. I work. Yeah, so there's like different schools in in my opinion. There's like the Nashville school where you go uh, in the morning and you do a co-write, and then in the afternoon you do a co-write. So you're hoping to get two songs done in a day. A lot of people get one song done in a day, but if you get one or two, that's huge. So that's like the Nashville school of thought. Then in New York, I feel like you go in there to work on the song, and you're you're producing and working on sounds and recording a guitar. Doing. I just need my space where I can go and create. It's like. The, behind the house when you grew up, if you had a tree house, it's like having a tree mm. house. And that's kind of where I am. We get in there. It's a great spot uh, in the city, and I can get in and just make stuff. Yeah, I, have, I brought a song for you guys now that we're just making on the fly. And it's a lot about just having that clubhouse vibe where you leave your apartment, go somewhere else and do your stuff, and come home and don't bring that back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't then go into the corner and worry about a bass sound. Oh, my God, that bass sound is so round. It's like at, <laughs> at work you can be like that, but right. at home it's about like you know Sid the science kid, you know. Right. So finding that balance, but you got to have a spot. Um, I, I see people making records at home. I see that. I don't know how long you could possibly do that for, where you're just like balancing the noise of the house with the thing. It's it's too much. So I lucked out. We got a, we got a great spot in New York, and I'm there all the time. How was quarantine for you? Like, did you work in it? Been, um, I mean, like, I know, like, I didn't, you know, Taylor Swift wrote folklore or whatever, like, in, just in quarantine, like, time for her to work. Yeah. So, but I guess it's a little different when you don't have kids and family well, and all that she, kind of shit. Well, also, you know? Taylor Swift, I have to say, this, this person, uh, she can visualize and hear a song in her head and then go make it. Like, did I you hear know songs, she was like but, that? Like, I feel like she started out as such a kind of a, she's the 16 year old poppy. Uh, country princess, but is she like actually talented? And she now she's showing. But no, she always wrote like those wrote her own shit, right? Those so so was she, in the music been, industry, yeah. was she known as like, oh, this girl's gonna be like a not just a, a hit, but like a timeless musician? Yes, because yeah. I was lucky enough to be be aware of Nathan Chapman, this dude, and and Rose, who is this the other writer with her. Um, so Nathan is a producer writer, and he came up with Taylor. I think her first three or four albums. And she would come in and say, I want my song to sound like this. And Nathan would go chase it down and make it sound like that. Um, when someone can come in and do that, I mean, there's like Bruno Mars. There's certain people like Michael Jackson. If you listen back to old stuff where he's, he's hearing these songs in his head and he's just into a voice memo, mm -hmm. just kind of doing the beat and doing the rhythm and all this stuff. That's next level shit when you can actually make it sound like that. I mean, we all hear songs in our head, and we go to work and try to get as close as we can get. But this That's girl, Taylor, she she hears a fully done product. And brain. then goes and makes it happen. To me, that's like when I, you know, I'm like, yo, what, you know that song that goes like, do, 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 and it's like, <laughs> no, I don't, I, the noises you make got me nowhere, right? you so, know? So, respect to her always, I mean. That's what, what happened with Folklore was, um, I forget, who was the guy from The National who wrote it with her? Well, yeah, no, I don't know, but I, I know what you're talking he about. He wrote, dude. like, the music, and she, and she, like, reached out to him on, like, one night and was like, hey, you know, I was, uh, I think we're writing an album in quarantine. Like, would you like to co-write it with me? Or, you know, would you like to write the music? And he was like, yeah, and he figured it was going to be a throwaway thing, like a hobby. Like, he figured it was going to be, like, learning Spanish or the ukulele. ukulele yeah. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah, she Turned wants to do to a quarantine album. Yeah, sure. And he's like, he just sent her, like, his folder of music. 
And he said the next morning he woke up and he, so he sent that like, I think he said 7, 8 p.m. And he, the next morning he woke up and he had an email from 2 a.m. that was Cardigan, the one, no, no, the one was one of the last ones written. Cardigan, Betty, and Seven or something like that. And it was just done. three done songs. Yeah. And yeah, he's like, so, oh, okay, she's really doing this. It's I'm, really yeah. tempting, I think, to, to, especially with pop music. In my opinion, because I got turned on to pop music late. Uh, my wife's like a real big pop music fan. And when someone in your life starts introducing you to more and more and more great songs, you start to see like the quality in them, the deep, you know, you peel away the layers. It's like, damn, that's not easy to do. <laughs> so it's easy and tempting in pop music for someone to go, ah, oh, she's just, you know, da, right. da, da, da. oh, it's just. No, no it's I saw still, that documentary that she did still... last year or whatever yeah. that was. Yo, so what, what? What's your opinion on on like the the business side of things with her masters and whatnot? Is that something that, like, do you guys just kind of accept? Part of me thinks that's fucked up. It's like if you write and create a song, it should be yours. But also by this point, it's like that's the business, right? Like, that's are we business. still really that surprised by this, or you know, like so, it's just how it goes, right? I think what, what, but what her her situation is different in the sense that. She just wanted to buy them. And right, they just won't let her. Right. right. I That's, feel like I feel like the the, the good, but like, the, the good like middle also, ground is that you should have right of first refusal. If it's your music, you should get like dibs. And if someone outbids you, then and it's not that like someone, it well it wasn't her original contract. Someone bought her contract, and she's like, no, I should be able to buy it. If you're mm -hmm. selling it, I should I get should to buy get it. it. Yeah. And they were like, no. That's so awesome. I think so her situation is wrong. But I think Scooter bought Big Machine. So right. he brought he brought the umbrella the whole thing, company yeah. right under that would have been and I, Taylor's and, I, and what I believe I, I heard with that too is that Taylor did have the option to buy like the whole label and, did. and was like I don't want to but that I think is like I don't want the label I want just my right. shit so here's but how I, I feel about masters it's like you you get these record deals and you're looking at them like damn, I got a record deal. I get to go make my records. You're not really thinking about the right, long-term effects. No, if not. you have a lawyer who is, which luckily we did, that we'll, in 10 years we'll have every record we ever made, every song we ever wow. wrote, every anything we ever did we'll have back. We already have half of it because we had a lawyer who was thinking, listen, let's do a 10-year deal or let's have an end game on this thing. It can't mm -hmm. be perpetuity. Mm -hmm. I don't know what her deal was. I do feel for her, but it, it it's also just... It's just business. Yeah. Um, so so I don't I'm not mad at anybody else for doing what they gotta do. Mm. Look, Scooter had to sell that stuff already. So he bought the big machine for three hundred million. He then sold Taylor's catalog for three hundred million. Right. So he still maintains a lot of that other stuff, but he, he sold so, that because he has to main he's a management company. Right. In the last year, no one's making money right. on right. the road. I feel like he just he just did it he just kinda came off as a dick. Like I think he, he could have done it and done it in a way that was more like uh, I don't know what the word for it is. Like, it was cooperative with her or whatever. He just kind of did it in a way that I think is There's like, always uh, a better way. Yeah. <laughs> There's always a yeah. better way. To Especially business, right? with someone of it. that magnitude, yeah. with, which, look, you, respect is so big. Like, where I come, it's respect is everything, yeah. right? So, like, that has to work in music. Well, mm. you can't just have a business and go, oh, but it's a bad business. It's, it's just rough. You deal with it. Mm. Well, that's like, that's a pretty rude thing to say to somebody who made a hundred hits. Right. right. So I feel for her, but it is just business. It's like it's such a catch twenty two. There's right. really nothing there. But I always have respect for like any artist who can do more than one have one hit song, awesome. But if you can maintain a career for 10, 20 years, I mean, you got yeah. respect. Yeah, no know? matter what genre, no matter what yeah, type he Also that was what... very subtly you, right? What? <laughs> if you're like, I don't know, uh, 25. If you start out as just some like jam band, and then next thing you know, it's 2020 and you're still doing it, you know, that's pretty fucking good, right? <laughs> I, I'm always so fascinated by like the videos I see you guys on social media where it, it does, it does seem like you guys just kind of get in a room and start like jamming and fucking around until. I mean, how does that work? Where it's but, like he, you know, you're gonna play the guitar, you're gonna play the drums, you hit on the keyboards, you're gonna start like humming, and everyone just kind of does their own part and feels off of each other. So that's where you gotta have like chemistry and so, know each other and know yes. the styles and all that. A lot of it comes from if I'm walking down the street and I I hear something happen, uh, something I always say it's delivered. Like you have a good idea, it's delivered to you. I mean, it might mm -hmm. come. You're not sitting at it. Right, crumpling up paper strikes you. Throwing yeah. them in the corner, yeah, and yeah, a yeah, pile yeah. of right. It just comes to you. Now, what you do with it, like Taylor, she knows and makes the beginning to end. I need help, so I'm going in the room. I'm saying, boys, I got this idea, this California idea. I want to write it about a kid who goes to California, lives out his dreams, but I want it to mean a lot more than that. I want it to be about anything you want to do, whoever you want to love. 
go love them. But I want it to sound like this. Then it's, they'll come in and go, shit, I got this. What about this bass line? How about these drums? So but when like, that happens, if, what, if they, what if they do something you, they, that you don't like? Would, so, would you be like, nah, dude, that's not what I thought at all. And this I would, goes, that would be, I'd be like, <laughs> okay, sounds good enough. Like, uh. No, because I learned this from Nashville, right? So Nashville, I learned you sit in a room and it's like, check the ego at the door. Mm-hmm. Don't mention bad ideas, first of all. Have a self filter. <laughs> <laughs> Be awesome at all yeah, times, yeah. and this isn't a problem. Suck yeah. is a good note. And yeah. if it comes out and it's something that someone doesn't want to hear, it's not a personal attack to say, hey, bro, let's try it this way. Or right. what do you think about something? So everyone in this group has so much of their own. Like, I don't know. I just feel like when they are themselves, it's always good. Mm. Like when Jerry plays saxophone or comes up with a guitar line, I'm like, I always like it. Mm. Right. Bench, bass. I always like every one of those dudes. I always so like well, what they do. Yeah. So either they're self filtering really fucking great, <laughs> or we just really like each other. Right. And you know, and I think that that's what's been most valuable. It's uh, you look at any of these groups that have camaraderie, teams, football teams. Mm. I always listen to athletes like Tanner Glass, my favorite hockey player ever. I see him with his family. Every time he goes somewhere, he goes, All right, team, let's go. All right, team, let's go eat dinner. Let's mow the lawn team you know mm-hmm. it's that team thing so we bring that into the band and when you're making songs if you, if everyone feels like they're part of a team no one's going to want to fuck up the team and uh it's been it's been great when someone goes solo in a band yeah that's almost always like god be behind the scenes be like kind of bad right dumbest shit ever <laughs> yeah it drives me nuts look yeah. one direction is the greatest example yeah. of this like why not just stay in one direction forever well hang on here we're gonna we're gonna downplay Harry Styles right now. I can't downplay Harry Styles. <laughs> Who am I downplay Harry? I'm just saying. Wonder, maybe that's not a great example. <laughs> They're all. Voted, I mean, like he isn't when, he like considered like the next Bowie? Is that just because of his dress? Or like I thought like I forget his album name. But he's like, I so thought, talented, dude. Right. I mean, he's so talented. When I hear these songs and my, and I see a three year old, my kid love him, and my wife love him, and yeah. I love him. I'm like, Shit. you're hitting something. I'm yeah. talking more about when I think Zayn left the group. Yeah, he that's, was the first one to yeah. bounce. I was kind of like, oh, damn, he was what first. I think, okay. I think I think one of the lesser guys was I the think first you're right, jump which off. to me was which, like a big red flag. But I think Harry was like, "All right, fuck you guys, I'm yeah. out of here." Uh, so maybe that's a terrible. But, but example, say but. like when it's uh, like when Justin Timberlake leaves in sync, and it's kind of like we know that you're a cut above, you know, no shade, but like Chris Kirkpatrick, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's like understandable, right? But I mean, those guys must be like, "Fuck you, man," right? Or do you think it's ever like a done in a, in a truly amicable way? I wonder. Like I if would, you want, if you wanted to do the Mark Robert album, would the guys be like, "We truly want your best," or would they be like, "Fuck, dude"? No, like, they're totally. It's totally cool. It's like yeah. I do projects that they work on. They do mm-hmm. projects I work on. Everybody yeah. in this group has something else that they do, mm-hmm. whether it's owning restaurants or running this or doing right, this. Right. It's like, we got your back. Everyone advertises for each other. That's one thing. Like We look at our, at our thing as like a family business, and you all kick back to the family. Like It's all very, you know. It's the mob. It's, it's the, one yeah. of the, you know. <laughs> Kiss the rings. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all we got. So when I see people who, who don't feel that way, yes, I think it's a huge mistake. Um, in sync, I mean, J- Justin, it's the writing was on the wall. What are you going to do? Yeah, you know, I mean, right. I, I think JC Chazé could dance his ass off. You know <laughs> I remember saying? thinking I mean, he was kind of like the one. He's at a Maryland first. dude, too. And, so, is he? Yeah, yeah. Much yeah. love for him. Yeah. I think, I think he, they said he was the best vocalist. Though, yeah, right? right. Yeah, he's like the best singer. Like and then was, just got the package. JT's yeah. JT. Those, I guess those are different, too, because those are like. Those weren't guys that like grew up. And get, like, they're just kind of manufactured, right? I think it's a little so bit. So you different. don't have the same love for the group as you do if it's like a family like yours, where it's like, yeah, we're gonna do our time together, and then again, split the Dave off. Matthews thing. They got a great band. Matthews will go and make a record. Mm-hmm. They'll play on it. Right. They'll help them out with it, and then they come back. It's all good, mm-hmm. I think. But yeah, yeah, I wonder what it's like if uh, right when it's a manufactured thing. It's got to be. It, it's, it's a like, bad idea. Like I saw this article. This band, Little Mix. Yeah. 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 I don't know one song, don't know any of these people, but it was like, I'm going solo. I was like, who the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'd ride I that shit out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, I mean, when you got a good thing going like yeah, that. But that's, I mean, you know, do you have like managers and, and agents and shit in your ear or are you kind of, you and your wife making all the decisions? Oh like? yeah, no, we've been lucky. We we started out with our management um, when it was just four bands at at the company and now it's two or 300. Yeah. So we went the same. That, I feel like that's where people get bad advice and or, you know, or when selfish it, advice from their point of view. Maybe and, a new person yeah. comes into the world and is like you are fucking great yeah let me tell you you're great and yeah. then once they st- no one ever tells you you're great <laughs> <laughs> like i've never had <laughs> right that's so true me you're great if they're, they're fawning like, over you like you that you should probably do something like more <laughs> right <laughs> you know? right 
So yeah, I think that happens. But in our situation, we literally have the same team, folks we've been working with forever. And they come and go and things, but it's mm -hmm. always, again, we really try hard to maintain a family vibe. If you came up now, would you try to do independent? Or do you think it's necessary to go through a label? I would do independent, absolutely. Now, yeah. having said that, touring going away right now is probably, that was my one thing with um, all young artists. I would say, you know, you could be, you could have a million streams on a song and be hugely successful uh, and have never toured, you're never going to make money. money. Right. Yeah, right. So once touring comes back, which it will in a year, I would say stay, stay independent and go tour and make money and make them want to pay you more. They're not going to pay you if you don't have tour history. But if you do, they'll then go sign. Just build your worth a little bit, you know? It's so like, about touring, right? It's so about Which tickets sucks and t-shirts. It's like, like, that's a grind, You guys right? know yeah, yeah, and t-shirts, yeah. I mean, t-shirts is like what built this company. People turn yeah. their nose up at t-shirts, <laughs> and no, it's like, true. it's crack, man. It's, right. I feel like it's a actually drug very dealer when I drop a new like, t-shirt. <laughs> seeing like, like, like internet personalities now like learn yeah. that merch is a thing. And like, we just made new merch. Like, merch yeah. has always been Should have been day the big, one. And like, it's... I feel like that's so easy to understand. Yeah. First of all, you have to have a brand that people want to buy the shirt. Yeah. A brand where people want to represent it. But once you have that, like, I mean, like the money. Like, I think merchandising was one of like the two reasons Chernin bought Barstool. Like merchandising that's and so, podcasts. Yeah. That's the difference too. Is like you said, because a lot of people you might have success, but if you don't have people who will purchase something tangible, have these it's young, like have these TikTok stars capitalized on merch yet? I don't. Uh, I, I I don't think I've seen merch. You would know that better. I think they've done things like like the Demilio family went like they have they partnered with Dunkin' Donuts like that kind of shit. Yeah. I don't know if you can buy like the Charlie shirt, but it's like you can buy the Charlie. It's just like uh, I think it's just like a latte. That's the Charlie. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's the same fucking thing. Anyone? They bought Hollister. So yeah, they well, are getting genius. into it. That's, yeah, I mean, it's that's more partnerships perfect. I think than than independent merch, but but the top dogs are are doing that kind of See, shit. See, if I were, if I had access to ninety eight million or thirty million people. I'd be putting shirts out. Right. Hell yeah. Without a doubt. You know? like, convert a fraction of those yeah, it's not, purchases. And it's not even you know? like being, um, it's not a negative thing. Put yeah. some good shirts out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. them want to wear them. Not garbage. Right. But you, know, you, you always, hear that with like people like, uh, like oh, Bella Thorne joins, joins OnlyFans, makes a million dollars day one. You should have put shirts on sale. Because it's yeah. that you yeah. probably would have made, made two million dollars. Yeah. You, know? you would have yeah. made it probably half and, and that. But like, do dude, all you know right. some of that shit. Right? Right. I'm way curious about these about the younger artists. I mean, they have a lot of great songs, success in so many different ways. But I think like the tried and true still exists. It's that radio still exists. People are still in their cars mm -hmm. every morning. Mm -hmm. Touring still huge and t-shirts. It's uh trying to maintain that like foundation. And then adding on all these millions of eyeballs, I mean, that's like the magic yeah, number. Right, you know? right, so right. hopefully there'll be some that kind of come out and real songs. I always wondered, you know, I see a lot of the artists on um, on the internet who are h highly successful singing other people's songs. Mm. I say, get some writers, get some producers, and make songs. Mm. Own the songs. And publishing, sell that shit later. You know what I mean? There's yeah. just so much more to the game. And I think they obviously know what they're doing. But I think song ownership is Why a huge... Why don't you do this stuff? Why don't you become like a manager for other for young acts in your older age? I'm 105 years old. <laughs> when I look at this shit, I'm yeah. like, I'm not dancing All right. for anyone. However, I appreciate and respect it. And I'm just learning so much from you, right. <laughs> from my wife and all our friends. We're like, look, this, he's from Maryland. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll give him a pass. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, you know, all right, well, to, well, why don't you uh, run for president? For that, that's, that's you know either either you get young and you're doing TikToks or you get old and you run for president. Yeah, I don't know. Kanye, I don't 2024. Know. Yeah, the politics thing is so gross to me at this yeah. point. You know, I always look at all these folks as like you know I'm just waiting for the shoe to drop. It's like once you start supporting somebody, four weeks later you find out they they blew somebody in the corner. You know, it's yeah. always something. <laughs> yep, you know, yep, and I'm yep. thinking like why can't we just have people who don't have Shit like that. I can't yeah. believe there's just that just somebody normal, just like a normal just fucking a normal person. Dude. But I guess when you get into that game, it ain't normal. It so. is the I think there's a line in Mindhunter, which R.I.P. Um, where they they first meet the uh, Have you seen the show? Uh, no, but it, it did get awesome. canceled, which is ridiculous. It was, yeah, it was highly successful. It, was actually, it wasn't like, canceled. It was just like he wanted to move on. To no, other but shit also and like and finally, like he said, he oh, was yeah. like, he's like, we just didn't have enough viewers for our mm -hmm. budget. He's like, mm -hmm. oh. he's like, we were. That's the last. I didn't think that would happen anymore. 
I figured that like there's always enough streaming services that if there's like a niche audience, even a small one, that like I think it's a pretty I, good. I can't sound believe it's a niche. Yeah, my hunter sounded like it was a hit. Well, I think budgets uh, are an uh, issue. Having talked to a couple people about great shows, that they just literally right now it's just there's not enough income coming. Mm -hmm. Right. That mm -hmm. I, we were talking about that with I'm sorry, my girlfriend the other day, where we were watching I'm sorry on, on Netflix, and she's like, "I'm so sad, like this got canceled," and I was like, "I think that once." Companies understand what their budget will be. Like I think right now they have no idea. Right. Whereas like let the year wrap up and then we'll find out what we have for next year. I think at that point they're gonna want to be like, they'll take a shot on a show like I'm sorry because like it's a show with a proven audience. Right. And it's a pretty low budget I would imagine. Yeah, have to and it's budget. like, I know the show has fans. So rather than taking a complete risk on this new show, let's just let's just take right. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean you guys are on the verge of having I think. Scripted, not scripted, but maybe some sort of shows. I'm imagining so I'm many. Trying, people. I think yeah. right yeah. there, yeah, yeah, because like you've you've amassed such a such a following in so many, in the, and it's growing and it's spreading. Right? Yeah, these, yeah, these, yeah, we're getting into new demos, new audience and new bubbles. Yeah, and, and we're right, getting new talented people who like it used to just be like, here's my opinion on the sports team or this story, and now we're we're getting people in the mix who are like writers and they can come up with original ideas and fictional ideas and characters and all that kind of shit. So like truly talented people starting to come through, which I think you start to see where it, this is like a, like a hundred year process. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We're in the very beginning, but hopefully it kind of like grows and grows so. and grows, you know? I mean, cause once people get the, like everyone has an opinion, uh, which is awesome. It's what's great about the world we live in. But is it though? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like the disclaimer? You're programmed like, to say like, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. um, but the mainly uneducated <laughs> yeah. uh, opinions and, Almost exclusively. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you look at you look at Barstool's comedy network, you know, so it's like in in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. But um there's a lot there. There's storylines all over the place. Yeah. I mean, John Boy, I look at you all the time, I say, This guy. <laughs> this is like a famous actor face, this guy right here, you know? And it's bound to happen. But I think, you know, and you're reaching so many folks that are coming up to me, hey, you know KFC. I'm like, yeah, yeah I fucking he, know he KFC. Said his, uh, your wife, right? You said yeah, your wife, yeah, yeah. his wife and her crew love One Minute Man, which yeah. is a weird, a weird dynamic they to do. get into. They of really all do. the things we've done, and we've had success in a lot of different realms, Kevin's success with One Minute Man is so jar, not jarring and like surprising, but like so clear. Like people yeah. come on, like they want to talk about One Minute Man. Yeah, we Be have, it. I haven't had anything like that where we've done some things, some failed, some succeeded, but I haven't had one that's like, oh, this is working. It was like, it was like that. Mario Lopez, who Ms. is Josh uh, Duhamel. Josh Duhamel and then uh, Ryan Felipe. Ryan Felipe, yeah. yeah. And it was like four like very big celebrities. Like the first thing they were like, they're like, of course I'm coming on One Minute Man show. Yeah, and I couldn't it was believe like, it. I mean, I've never <laughs> had that. And, and, and you talk about the tipping point and all these things, right? I mean, yeah. these, are, these are signs, right? But that one, for me, it was that group, just her and her friends yeah, commenting on things that I'm like, I didn't even, I mean, <laughs> I knew it was happening. And I think I'm seeing views of like 40,000. Oh, I know. But it's on the Barstool account. It's like millions, like 4 million but, fucking but views. But as far but, as just like first day. Boom, oh, yeah, yeah. Boom, they're boom, flying. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that to me was a big flag. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's you what know. you know. Did you have that for, for OAR? Was it just like crazy game of poker or was there something before that or what? There was a lot of a lot of those types of situations, but for me, I I grew up 90210. Y'all are a little young for that shit. <laughs> no, I know. I, know, I, mean, I know it. I know it. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, like, dude, it's fucking sideburns alone came from that shit. <laughs> so I had sideburns for years. My wedding photo, I was like, oh my God, like a six inch. But that show was a part of my world and then when Shattered became a thing like a hit song for us and it became the theme song for the new 90210 mm. and then the, and get this a Blackberry commercial mm. <laughs> and then and boom, boom I, that's when I started to be like holy shit like we're in the zeitgeist right of, which, which so that like, it, like that you, was weird you first thought like okay and like, like at that point you're massive but like, not like, in my head, dude. Like in my head, I'm like just a in a Black band who's running around, <laughs> not <laughs> like the tours with the people screaming and the. That to like, me was like that's what my life was gonna be. Like I wanted to be a touring music. I didn't. I didn't want to be. I, I, yeah. I didn't try to be famous mm. or something. It just wasn't in. That's not something we were used to. Right. But we wanted to be road dogs. Right. Row warrior touring people, where like we knew we grew up in. Like, I, I want to be the polar opposite. Yeah. I want to get in the yeah. BlackBerry commercial and just sit there and, like, <laughs> right. and, and right. money roll in. So you know? to me, when that started going, and you're on TV shows, I mean, every show we were on got canceled before it even came out. But like we were on set, <laughs> and that was cool. And I'm like Matthew Modine, and like 
I mm-hmm. the first term when I heard like they were like, hey, bringing number one to the set, and I'm like, who's that? And it was Modine, and they don't even say your name on the radio. It's like <laughs> <Yeah>. number one. <laughs> uh, I was like, this is a whole nother ball game, dude. And right. when we got into that world, for me, it was mind blowing. And those things kept happening. Like even like, for we did Times Square on New Year's Eve. Taylor Swift walking by to do Shake It Off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right in front of me, I'm looking at this person who's like six, eight inches taller than me, looks like a superstar. You can just, you know what I'm saying? She's Those moments yeah. are like mind blowing. But everything else is just, wor- it's like what you're doing. It's, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. it but do yeah. you think you're still doing it right now if you weren't good enough to sell out, let's call it what it is? <laughs> the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you, no. if like, like, do you think you're still out there grinding on the streets? We grind because, um, that's a great question, no. No, because if I had been doing 25 years straight right. with no sort of like You'd be dead. taps on the back, like, <laughs> yeah, 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 you're doing all right. With no Blackberry commercials. No commercials, <laughs> I'd probably be, yeah, a lot less motivated. That, that's right, I'm going to go be a teacher. I, <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I find it very honorable if you're like still chasing your dream. But after, when would you have, like, what? when do you think you would have given up? Like, how many years in do you think a band, a musician, a rapper, whoever, some sort of act, it's like, okay, dude, it's not really going to happen for you. I think there's no age for it because what I've learned is that folks can do amazing things at any age. And I've seen hit songs for 50 year olds and 60 year olds. I've seen amazing things happen. Uh, I'm blanking on any sort of example. (laughs) (laughs) But it happens, I swear. (laughs) I swear. But there are people. um, And like, was it? Rodney Dangerfield didn't get successful yeah, until way one. later in his one. life. But right? don't you feel like those usually, you do know those, those I dug stories, deep for that you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but or there's urban legends. I always heard like, you know, Danny DeVito went on like 300 auditions before he got it. I don't know if those are true or not. Right. But I feel like for the most part, you know, you, you know, you get a song out there or a hit or whatever within a certain amount of time. And if you, and if it's not happening, I think after that, you got to like, follow it up. For me, it would have been, um, yeah, when I started having kids and they yeah. were looking at me like, you're going on tour again. And you're gone for a long time, months yeah. and months and months like, and months and months. It, right? It's got to be worth it, yeah. or else at some point I would just say, well, "This ain't right." For I'd this. rather this, be with this my kids, right? Yeah. So w- that that would have been everything else. I would have kept going because um, I just really like waking up in a parking lot, all the buses, the diesel, the trucks. Everyone's unloading. You throwing the ball around. Everyone's working out, eating, doing. It's just that summer camp thing that I would never stop. But I don't know if I do the I I don't know if I do the uh, uh, year round freezing cold mm, fucking yeah. in Fargo North North yeah South I'd be shows. touring in you know like South Beach Dog, and, I was in you know. I remember Valentine's Day landing in Fargo Ugh. in the snow and going it's February I'm like what am I doing yeah. <laughs> what am I doing for, and then, for, uh, like what how many you know what, what what venue are you playing in the Dakotas that's worth that wasn't pretty no it wasn't you know, pretty it, it wasn't you're pretty you're out there like let's just play a game of poker get the fuck out of here Fargo but let's be honest a lot of folks get out there and they're not honest about it and they're just like you know it's for the art and it is for the art yeah Come on, but it's also for the money. Feed your kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. That's it's like that's you know who says that like unsuccessful people. <laughs> you know, it's all about the love of the art. It's like, yeah, okay, man, I can just do the art and it love is. it. It is. I paid. tried to feed my kids some art this morning. We're <laughs> <laughs> not having it. I love it, man. Well, thanks for the time, as always. Uh, and you're, you're doing like like uh, like internet shows, right? Like you, I, I saw a lot, was last week the first one. I, I, yeah, one of the so, bigger ones. So when the when the corn uh, quarantine when the pandemic started. Um, for a month, I was like everyone else, didn't know what was going on. Eventually, I felt like I should be doing something. So I, I just play songs in the apartment. Right. Yeah. And it looked it looked like you were playing a song in the apartment. People appreciated it. I did six or seven of them just on Sundays, mm-hmm. just for fun. There were no sports. Nothing was happening. But then I stopped that because I thought, you know, you people have seen enough apartment shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I just saw that coming. So I didn't want to be the last motherfucker <laughs> doing apartment shows. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so I waited months and months, and I, I waited for some technology to come out that would actually make this to the next level. So I was watching the NBA, and I noticed that all the TV screens around, yeah. people's faces on them. A lot mm-hmm. of the sports were doing it. Uh, no one was interacting directly with the TV screens, so I thought, what if we had all the screens, hundreds of people on them, and I could see them, they could see me, I could hear them, they can speak to me, and eventually we could probably pump some some lighting into their house and we're going to be getting to that point soon too where it's a lot more interactive and then thousands of people can watch this thing happen 
So a company came up with a technology where this could happen, and I, I said, let's do a series of three. The first one would be in the studio where I'm showing you where I'm, I work. We'll play some songs. kind of used to seeing this. Yeah. I'm talking to the screens. I'm talking to people. It's great. The next one's in a barn, much bigger and very nice barn up in Connecticut. Uh, and it's going to be me and John Lampley, the trumpet player. Talk through some songs, a little bit more of a show. The third one's going to be in an empty venue that we all know and love, a famous venue we all know and love, and and it'd be a, a straight up show. We'll have some fans in the audience, but it's more, again, letting people come into your world. I can see them on the screens. And growing that into a point where, like, I'm seeing Tony Robbins bought a warehouse in Florida and loaded it up with screens, and he's, he's off the road just right. doing that for 30,000 people a pop. I'm not interested in the amount of people. I'm interested in some technology that can separate it so that when touring does come back, we've done our best to make it our best, and we can put it down mm -hmm. and get back to the real shit. Uh, so that's my goal. My goal there is, is something, too, though. I, I feel like it, it, it started as a, like, instead of touring – because we can't, we're going to do this. I think there's like a whole, it can be a separate thing that almost coexists with, Dude, you can get back on tour, but people also want to see you in your, in your home studio and watch the process or whatever the fuck you're going to do there. You're so fucking dead on. We, we were, uh, just yesterday came up with this idea that once we get back on tour, what if every day, we have a lot of rooms just like this when you pull into a venue like Jones Beach or whatever. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of these types of rooms in the back. What if every day you had a staff who came and set up you know, six or ten of these, and people from all over the world who couldn't be at Jones Beach that day, from 5 to 6 p.m., we're warming up in a room, yeah, playing right. drums, we'll fucking around, that, talking man. to and people are with us. Yes. So I think you're dead on melding Just that. another re revenue stream, another way to yeah. reach fans. So like... we're going to build up the production big, 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 and when real touring comes back, we'll bring it back, but have it. Keep going, yeah. I mean, like, the rap world has been doing these versus battles, Genius. and I think, like, that started because of quarantine, and I hope they do it forever because it has nothing to do with, you know, I don't think of that instead of going to the concert. I think of that as just this whole... Again, dude, you're right. The collaborative, you know? the collaboration is what people want to see. They had two million people watch that right. last one. That was nuts. At one time. Two million. Like two yeah. million live. I think that's also because there was a chance there was going to be an on-camera murder. Know. But, <laughs> know, which thankfully did. We avoided. You should do... You get, I was you, say, who would who, are you in, like, Dispatch? You and Dave Matthews, you and uh, Dude, Steve you Miller are band, so like, locked in right yeah. now. <laughs> like we have plans. Could you on imagine the books. that? We have we have major plans on the books with Dispatch. We have, uh, and if I could sit in a room with a person, I mean, there's a huge list of people, but yeah, sitting in a room with with Matthews or with anyone else that I, I love to sit and do something like mm -hmm. that. It doesn't It'd be matter. Sick. I would it watch would the shit, shit out of that. <laughs> Dude, if I could see... Ed... OAR versus Dispatch, let's yeah. go! Like, it'd be so fun. That. Yeah. And, you know, it's and all again, nothing fun. to do with pandemic. That's just something I would want to watch whether the world is open or closed. Like, if I... It's 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 all these experiences I want to watch. Like, this this Tyson fight coming up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to see every second of this thing. Yeah. Because well, when like is that going to again? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, Roy... It, you know, but you know oh. it's going to be one of those ones. Where we're all except we're all going to watch it. And you're going to go, ooh. You know, like, as soon as we turn it on, it's going to be like, ugh. Yeah. Look, I feel, I feel, I'm a, I'm a, we're all big boxing fans. We love fighting and all these things, but like, there's a part of you that is kind of worried. Yeah. yeah. For Roy and Mike. Right. right. But it's mostly not, Roy. It's not a fun, you know. <laughs> mostly Roy. Yeah. Mostly but, you, Roy. but you know, like the you rules, know. right? Like, you can't try to knock someone out. Oh. Like, like yeah, but you can punch him in the kidney, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, like, 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 I think like, we, we hyped up a Mike Tyson return to the ring. Like, 30 years ago right. it wasn't good <laughs> we were disappointed by that mm -hmm. one and the other one like we've done this a couple times already like 25 years ago and those were disappointments imagine now I, I mean. sold tickets to my basement for the the Spinks fight yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom made Mama Celeste pizzas uh -huh. five bucks a pop Kids came down, 93 seconds, yeah. the shit's over, right? So we've been, we're disappointed by Mike and Ann. All the time, we're still going to do Mike it. All the time. We'll always but do it, man. These experiences what I want to see. I mean, like yeah. a show about what y'all do. Mm. These are things people want to be a part of. They want to experience, yeah. like, from another angle. But you got to change the angle. That's the thing, like, in my opinion. Again, you, you're seeing the same type of performances over and over and over. You're going to get tired of it. Yeah, right. It's the Zoom effect. Right, right, right. Nobody right. wants to the fucking fatigue. be on Yeah, yeah, You gotta yeah. do the Garth Brooks? You gotta, you gotta do a... <laughs> did you see what that son of a bitch did? No. He he was like, I'm gonna do like 90 cities, drive in. But but then it was just, he played it on the screen. 
Like you, you drove he didn't in. Go to the city, and then it was just a recorded <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, like I mean, Garth, if come anyone on. has the budget to do it, you can do it. <laughs> right? I mean, that's a dude. I got to sing much. with that dude one time. Uh, we did Friends in Low Places. Oh wow! And really, and that's like the one to do. Dude, you know? I told him a story about. I was like, man, when my car when I grew up was '84 Civic, had three tinted windows and <laughs> dead stickers <laughs> all three over it, an ashtray windows. and blah 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 blah. And he come up, he goes, "You should make a, uh, an album called Three Tinted Windows." So I was like. No done. fucking problem, yeah. man. Like, that's my my tip. When I'm done, that's, that's my it. last album. It's like three tinted windows. That is a great Because when Garth yeah. gives an idea, but that idea he had, he should have just shown up. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's amazing, though. He's he, awesome. He, he's he unbelievable. He makes big money, oh, too, right? He's like rich, rich, right? I know that he flew like from his house to tour and back to his yeah. house. Yeah. I think that's it's like the Travolta crazy. thing with the with the landing strip in the house. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one of those next deals. level type Yeah, shit. we're not on that shit. Not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. yet. One yet. day. <laughs> 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 All right, brother. Thanks as always, oh, my man. man. Thank yet. you guys Thank so you. much. When's the uh, when's the Connecticut show? Uh, December 15th. We're going to head up there. We're going to we're going to make it look really pretty. It's in this um this guy's place. It's uh it's beautiful. It's one of those barns that like Christmas shouldn't be vibe. called a barn. It should be yeah. called like mansion. It's quite nice. Yeah. 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 So we were excited for that. And then the next one after that is January 12th. Beautiful. beautiful. We'll Looking pump it out. To it. Thanks, y'all. Thank, Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Listen, if you made it this far into the video, which is far, like no one ever does that on the internet. Like it's the end. You made it to the end the of the video. The full fucking video you, you watched did. the whole thing. So if you liked it and you watched the whole thing, why don't you subscribe? It means you like us. Click the subscribe button because if you don't, I'm going to fucking murder John. And I'm going to like it. Kill him with my bare fucking hands. Yeah. And if you weren't sold on this video, there's plenty more. Watch what's next up and then subscribe. But just subscribe so I don't have to fucking kill him. Subs well, I don't know. Do what you want, but subscribe. Probably.